girlies, and welcome back to the, to the pod. Today we have an advice Q&A episode. So everything about acne, motivation, dating, relationships, boys, shaving, and those types of things, and a lot of other random questions. So if that interests you, keep listening. But first, let's chat really quickly about my week. Um, First of all, I don't know what's been going on. I've been on my grind recently, okay? I literally have been making DIY dorm decor, okay? I did a cute painting. I've been, like, making this, um, what is it called? Like, wall art thing. It's really not very intricate. It's literally just a wooden initial, and I'm gonna, like, spray paint it. But anyway, I'm trying to make my dorm cute. We'll see if I actually use all these things, but um, I think it's fun and exciting. And then also today, as it will come to a surprise for literally everybody, I bet, because it was a surprise for me, this morning I woke up at like 6.45, just for no reason, because my sleep has been really bad. I've mentioned this in the past few episodes, my sleep has been really bad just because I've been feeling feeling like really anxious lately and, um, you know, have a lot going on, thinking about a lot of stuff, so I haven't really been able to fall asleep very well or stay asleep. Um, but anyway, this morning I woke up at 6.45, and then literally at, like, 9 a.m., for no reason, I went on a three-mile walk. Yeah, and if you're like, Carmen, what the heck, why? I don't know, I was just feeling it, because I was laying in my bed, and I couldn't fall back asleep, and I was like, I should do something productive. I'm going to go for a walk. And then I did. And now I feel so good about myself. And I realize that walking helps you stress less because you're not really thinking about anything because, you know, you're like breathing so hard. And then if you start thinking about stuff, your breathing gets messed up. And I realized why while I was going on my hot girl walk um, that I don't know if I walk correctly. Like genuinely, I was I swear one side of my body is like shorter than the other. So I felt like I was walking on an angle. Unless the sidewalk in my neighborhood is like slanted everywhere. I don't know. But I kept thinking, I was like, am I walking the right way? I don't know. But anyway, it was fun. So if the, if you're thinking about exercising, this is your sign to do it. Um, But yeah, I think I've gone on a walk like twice this week. But the other day it was like a mile. Today I was like, no, we're going three miles because I walked from my house to the park and then I did three loops in the park and then I walked back and that was like three miles um it was like an hour or something but now I feel good I took a shower and now we're recording the episode so good stuff it is literally 10 30 in the morning though and I feel like I've done so much and I feel so productive and I made like a cute breakfast I got toast with like this fancy raspberry jelly and I put strawberries on it to make it look pretty So, it's been a fun morning. But now let's get into your questions because that's why you're here, obviously. Um, I asked y'all a while ago to send in your questions. By the time you're listening to this, this will have been almost two months since I posted this story Q&A. So, if you're like, Carmen, I never remembered seeing you post a QA, and a Like, I, did you actually? No, I did. It was just in August. Okay, um, and this episode's October, um, but yeah, here are your questions. A lot of them were back to school related, but I did so many back to school episodes. Also, since it's the middle of October, I was like, people probably don't want to hear that when you've already been at school for a while and probably have figured stuff out. First question is, what are some good ways to get rid of acne and acne scars? Okay, as I mentioned, I swear, like in literally every episode. But I'm going to say it again. I have struggled with acne since I was in sixth grade. I went on Accutane in seventh grade. I had really bad hormonal acne. I still take medicine for my acne to this day. Um, I use Curology. Um, but anyway, so I've struggled with acne for literal years, which is funny to me because I'm literally 18. And, having str- and saying that I've struggled with something for years makes me feel like I sound like a... 60 year old man or something um but anyway so I've struggled with acne I got some tips 
first of all, okay, um, don't use harsh products. If Obviously, if you have acne, you're probably going to gravitate more towards the products that say for acne prone skin, for acne, and it'll have like a bunch of harsh ingredients in it like salicylic acid, and that is going to dry out your skin. Like, yes, sometimes it can help with um your pimples, but it's better as like a spot treatment instead of having a whole face wash that's just salicylic acid. I remember, I think my sister had this face wash. It was like, this is probably wrong. I don't know what it was called. I think it was like benzoyl peroxide or something. And it was literally, I swear, just like straight acid and it made her break out worse. So if you've been using a product that says for acne, um, check what's in it. Check to see if it's super harsh because a big misconception with acne and people who have acne is thinking that you need to get rid of the moisture on your skin and that like moist that moisture is making you break out worse. But often you're breaking out or your breakouts can be worse because you don't have enough moisture. You're not moisturizing enough. And if you're someone who has acne or if you're someone who struggles with dry skin, you need to use moisturizer. Everybody, no matter what your skin type, no matter what your skin problems, you need to use a moisturizer. I don't care if you think it's going to make you break out. It won't. Get a moisturizer that says it won't break you out. It says it's like not pore clogging. There's a lot of moisturizers that say that. And if you have oily skin, use like a gel moisturizer. If you have dry skin, use a thick whipped moisturizer, okay? Um, so the oily your skin, the lighter the products you want to use, but you still can't like be skipping out on moisturizer. Also, acne, um, don't pop, pick, scratch any of your pimples, okay? I know it's tempting. Um, and sometimes you're just gonna have to do it, or sometimes you know you can. But a lot of the times when we try to pop things, first of all, they aren't ready. Second of all, popping pimples often makes more spread around that and you're just going to make it inflamed and irritated and it's going to last longer. A way you can resist the urge to pop it is to use those pimple patches or also something that I like to do. If I notice my face is breaking out, um, what I do is when I'm getting ready in the morning at night, I'll in my bathroom, I'll get ready with the light off. Okay, so I'll like have a light on in the in another room so I can see what I'm doing so it's not like pitch black, but I'm not going to have the light on where I'm facing a mirror because then this is going to you're going to resist the urge to pop your pimples because you can't really see it because it's going to be dark. And sometimes that sometimes that's what you got to do. Okay. Also, it's kind of fun getting ready in the dark. Um I just normally do this so I don't get like up and close to my face and like stress about the pimples that I have or that I don't have or that something's wrong on my skin anyway um so that helps also if you struggle with severe acne okay go to a dermatologist if you can if you've tried everything you've tried all the -the over-the-counter products you've tried um changing your diet eating better drinking more water washing your face regularly, moisturizing, whatever. You tried everything that everyone tells you to do. Go to a dermatologist if you can. Um, Often they'll give you a prescription topical cream. So something you put directly on your face or they'll give you a pill, um, usually like an antibiotic thing, I think. Um, I know a popular one that dermatologists give is doxycycline. Personally, that has never worked for me. But anyway, I went on Accutane, though. That's, like, their last resort. So if you think you're going to go into a dermatologist and they're immediately going to be like, let's put you on Accutane, they're not because Accutane is a big ordeal. It's also extremely expensive, and there's, like, a lot of side effects and risks. I genuinely don't know how it's, like, legal. Anyway, um, but yeah, those are my tips for acne. Also, like I mentioned a bit, Your diet, what you eat, what you're drinking has a lot to do with how your skin looks. So, um, like, coffee, alcohol, soda, that's going to make your skin worse. Um, Eating greasy foods, eating foods that aren't good, overly processed foods, 
For me, the biggest thing for my skin is eating sugar. So usually around my period, I want to eat more sugar. And when I do, I start breaking out literally everywhere. Um, so if you're someone who eats a lot of sugar and you're like, hmm, why am I breaking out? Maybe try to cut back. Also, for a lot of people, milk is a big thing. Um, I personally don't drink milk, mainly because I don't like it, but also because it makes me break out. Um, so check what you eat, too, for your skin. Also, this is another thing. I genuinely don't have a theory. Well, I don't know if this completely works, but something that I think that helps or that gives me peace of mind is using silk or satin pillowcases, okay? Because I swear my face has been breaking out less. Also, I used to break out on my cheeks and I used to have scarring on my cheeks um, from like breaking out there so much, but I started using silk pillowcases and now I don't break out on my cheeks ever. So invest in like good pillowcases or just wash your pillowcases often if you can't do that or you don't want to buy something and speaking of acne scars the biggest thing you can do is give it time but again go to a dermatologist if you can accutane got rid of all my acne scars um i genuinely don't know how i would have gotten rid of them like without it because mine were really bad um I know a lot of people use like chemical exfoliants to get rid of it, but I would do some research on that. But again, I highly recommend going to a dermatologist if you can. I recently haven't been very motivated. What should I do? First of all, I would like to say there are going to be days when you're not feeling motivated, you're not feeling like doing it, and that's okay. But sometimes we get into those long periods like a slump. Um, where we don't want to do anything, all we're doing is just chilling, watching Netflix, um, we don't want to go out, we don't want to see friends. So this is the time to get motivated. Um, some of the things that help me get motivated is one, make a to-do list, write down everything I need to do, write down, um, things that maybe I have not been doing that I need to do or that are overdue. So, Things that you haven't been doing, write it down, get it all done. And the thing about motivation is that motivation will come and go. But you still have to get things done, no matter if you're motivated or not. Um, And this is just kind of pushing yourself to do things you don't want to do. On the days you don't feel like it, you do it anyway, okay? So the next day, the next time you wake up and you think, ugh, I just want to lay in bed for another 30 minutes. No, force yourself to get up. Okay, by forcing yourself to go and do things, you will gain new motivation. Okay, also ways to get motivated. I feel like taking breaks. Um, if you've been burnt out, take a break. Go with your family somewhere. Take a nap. Go outside. Go for a walk. Um, but again, I would like to emphasize: you can't be motivated all the time. That is just not realistic. Nobody is. Me specifically, I feel like majority of the time I am not motivated. Like, there will be one or two days, maybe a week, where I feel motivated, genuinely. Out of seven days, maybe one or two, and I'll feel motivated. And those are the days where I'm going to, like, freaking grind because I know throughout the rest of the week I'm not going to want to do anything. But also something that's been helping me is I've been making, like, a weekly to-do list. So... I'll write out each day of the week and then what I need to do during each of those days and I'll make this schedule on a Sunday so I can plan my week out in advance and I use Notion to do this but you can write it on a piece of paper, a whiteboard, whatever you might want to do in the notes app of your phone, whatever Um, but I just have been using it on Notion And this is really helpful too because I'm giving myself a plan. I'm giving myself a structure so that I have less room to um, convince myself that I don't need to do something. Because if I see something on a list, I'm going to do it, okay? Because not having something crossed off my list is going to stress me out, okay? And if you're like me, you need lists. You like having lists to get things done. So use lists. Take advantage of that. I promise it'll help you feel motivated. But again, If you're just feeling burnt out, take a break, take a step back from whatever work you might be doing, um, and yeah. 
How can I have fun being single? Okay, as someone who's been single, like, pretty much her whole life, uh, (laughs) here are some tips, I guess? I don't know. Um, first of all, hang out with your friends. If you're someone who just got out of a relationship, you probably haven't been talking to your friends as much, because it's easy when you are in a relationship, I guess, to, obviously, you're going to be with that person all the time, so maybe you've been neglecting some of your friends. Um, So it's important to reach out to your friends that you had, you know, before, during, after the relationship happened. Um, Make plans to hang out. Be an active friend. So you make the plans. You reach out. Because the thing is, if you want to have fun, a lot of the times um, people are in their own world, okay? We're all busy. We all have stuff going on. And sometimes we just kind of forget that we have friends and that we need to hang out and interact with them. Or maybe that's just me. I don't know. Sometimes I forget and I have, and I'm like, oh my God, I haven't talked to so-and-so in a while. I should text them. Hey, how are you doing? Let's hang out. Um, so like that type of thing, text them, try to find a new hobby. Okay. Because if you just got out of a relationship, you probably have a lot of free time, I would assume now. So maybe you want to pick up a sport um, do some art, become a TikTok influencer for memes. I don't know. Whatever you think might be fun. Another thing you can do, spend time with your family, okay? Be with them, um, hang out. But I feel like the biggest thing to have fun is distractions, especially if you just got out of a breakup. Um, and then also realizing that you can still have fun you're single and I think this is also another thing um just with like friendships as well you don't need to always have someone with you to have fun or to be doing things like you can go out and do activities by yourself whether this means you're someone who has a boyfriend or a girlfriend or if you're someone who just always needs a friend to go with them wherever and can't go anywhere by themselves um this is your sign to do something by yourself. And I know it's so scary because I remember this was like two years ago, right? Genuinely, I had never been anywhere by myself. And I'm not even joking about this. Like I was always with a friend, always with a family member. I have a bunch of siblings. So I was always with one of them, my parents, whoever. I was always with someone. And one day I decided, okay, I really want to go to the pool. But no one wanted to go to the pool with me. My mom didn't want to go. My brother and sister didn't want to go. And no friends wanted to go. So I was like, great. I'm going to go to the pool by myself. And that was genuinely terrifying, which looking back, I think that's so funny that I was scared to go to my neighborhood pool by myself. Um, But anyway, I did it. Was I there for like 30 minutes and that was it because I was uncomfortable? Yeah, but I did it. And now I can feel comfortable going to places by myself. Like literally, Even today, okay, when I went on my walk, I was kind of nervous because I feel really awkward walking by myself and in my neighborhood just because I feel like I'm always going to see someone I know. And I was wearing like a cute outfit at first and then I changed because there's old people in my neighborhood and I thought I was going to get judged. So go out and do things by yourself. You can have fun by yourself. Go out to eat by yourself. Go to the park. um, Go shopping. Do things by yourself. Learn to have fun by yourself. And get that relaxation, that time to reflect um, maybe on your previous relationship or just how life is going in general. Um, But you can still have fun being single. What should I do if I get ghosted? Hmm. So funny story, guys. I actually thought I was getting ghosted like the other day, but apparently not. But also at the same time, kind of yes. Um, because this person hadn't responded to me in like a week, and I was like, This is so interesting. Um, but okay, but I wasn't gonna say anything, and then they responded last night, and I was like, Oh, interesting. But now I'm debating if I want to interact with that at all because I'm feeling petty. Um, anyway, don't be like me, but if someone ghosts you, um, best thing you can do, I feel like is you have to think, okay? Imagine you're the person doing the ghosting. 
Or if you've ever ghosted anyone at all, think about why you did it. You probably did it because you weren't really interested in that person. You probably did it maybe because you don't really want to be friends with them or you don't like them like that, whatever. If this is a person you're talking to like romantically or getting ghosted by a friend or like some random person, I don't know. There are so many reasons. So think of reasons why you would ghost someone and then put it in the context of your situation. So say you're talking with a guy or a girl, whoever, someone you're romantically interested in and um, you think things are going well, you're texting all day, talking all the time, and then all of a sudden they don't respond. And you're like, hmm, that's interesting. And then you're going to wonder, you're like, what did I say that's wrong? But then this person just doesn't respond, like ever. And this is when you need to realize, okay, they're probably not interested, but they're too, um, trying to think of like PG words. This has happened the past few days. I try to think of words to replace other words and there's just not like a good one. Um, I don't know. They're too wimpy. Sure. To, um, straight up be like, I don't think this is working out or just, I don't know. They're going for the indirect way. It's kind of like letting go of a toxic friend. They're indirectly just kind of leaving, just backing off, not talking to you as much. So you think you're they're less interested. This is them telling you they're not interested. Okay. If you're getting ghosted, they're not interested. Don't waste your time trying to make them interested. Okay. Because there's always going to be someone out there that would be interested. Um... So just know too, if you're feeling bad about being ghosted, I also got ghosted recently and have been before. But then again, it's okay. It's a thing we all go through. Um, I think. I don't know. Um But yeah, if you get ghosted, I'm sorry. My best advice is to move on and try not to interact with this person anymore, okay? Don't double text them. Don't triple text them. Be like, hey, what's up? Keep texting them all the time. Because obviously, they're trying to send you a signal that they're not interested, okay? That they don't want to talk to you anymore. So don't keep bothering them. Don't keep trying to make something happen that's not going to happen, especially when the other person isn't interested. And if you think about it, why would you want to spend your time on someone who won't even give you the light of day or won't even give you like a few seconds out of um their day to like respond to you. So just know you deserve better. That's my take on getting ghosted. Thank you. How do I flirt with guys? Hmm. You know, I've been asking myself this my entire life because I think I'm horrible at flirting with people. Mainly because I feel like I'm mean. And I don't try to be, okay? But I feel like my love language is like verbally bullying men, okay? And that's just how I feel, okay? Um, I know a lot of people or girls, when they try to flirt, they try to act dumb, okay? Let me give you flirting no-nos, okay? First of all, don't change yourself for some guy. If you're someone really smart, don't act like you're stupid. Don't act dumb. First of all, that's not cute. And second of all, what are you doing? Also, you don't need to change your entire personality, how you carry yourself just for a guy. Um, Because if you have to change yourself completely for someone else, then what's the point? Because if they don't like you how you are, then why should you like them? You know, which I just is like, I don't understand. Um... I feel like some easy ways to flirt with guys, a lot of people, if you like this, I guess, you can be touchy, um, touch your arm, touch your leg, um, if you're more shy, I guess, or eye contact, eye contact is always good, um, ask them to hang out, uh, I don't know, guys, I will say, I genuinely never talk to boys, like, my sister makes so much fun of me she's like Carmen how do you never talk to guys and the thing is like I barely talk to my friends on like snapchat or text like I have to make so much of an effort to talk to the people I like that I'm like I can't convince myself to make that much of an effort for someone I don't even know okay it's just it's so much work and I'm tired 
I'm just so tired and like emotionally exhausted. I just can't put in that effort. Um, but I don't know. I feel like be yourself. That's always, I always get so annoyed when people say that, but I feel like that's the best thing because if a guy doesn't like you for you, drop him. It's like the ghosting thing. Okay. Drop him. Bye. Thank you. Do you have any advice for breaking up with someone? I've broken up with two guys. And both times, I think I did it the wrong way. So learning from my mistakes, I'm going to tell you what not to do. Okay, first of all, I would like to preface this by saying, whether you're the person being the breaker upper or getting broken up with, both sides suck. Okay, first of all, because if you're the person breaking up with them, you know, you're like anxious before you know what's going to happen. And then you have to see someone's face like drop and look extremely upset and then get mad at you or whatever um but then you're on the other side and you're like what the hell because you're confused and you're like why did they just break up with me um but anyway breaking up with someone do it in person okay look them in the face uh also realize you don't have to give an explanation they're gonna ask why but you don't have to or if you want to do it give them closure so you don't have to talk about it another thing for a breakup, okay, after you break up with someone, there's going to be a short period of time where you think you made the biggest mistake ever and you think that you need to go back to them. This is like the three days after, okay? Three days after you break up with someone, you're going to think, oh my god, I made a mistake. I should go back to them. No, okay? Stop yourself. You broke up with them for a reason and if you think about going back, remember those reasons. If you're having these feelings of, oh, maybe things aren't working out, Things aren't working out, okay? And you're just going to end up breaking up with them again later on in a few months. And that's just not a good idea. So let those three days pass. Let yourself say, hey, this sucks. But that relationship wasn't very good anymore. And that's okay. We're moving on. One thing not to say, I feel like, because this is just a punch in the gut. Don't, if you're breaking up with someone because you like someone else, don't say that. Okay, if they ask you why you're breaking up with them, have another reason. Okay, don't be like, oh, I don't like you anymore. I'm going to go date Jake now or whatever. Um, no, no. Also, um, I feel like something kind of awkward to say that people just say that doesn't mean anything is, oh, like, I don't want to date anymore, but we can still be friends. Girl. Do not say that because that is just so uncomfortable unless you actually want to be friends and you genuinely mean it. But if you don't mean it genuinely, you don't want to speak to this person ever. You're just done. Do not say that. Okay, because then you're just you're ruining it. You're ruining it. Um. Also, take into consideration that you are probably hurting someone's feelings. So try to take that with grace. But know that if you're feeling like you should break up with someone, it's probably the right decision because if you don't do it now, you're just going to stay unhappy and those thoughts are going to fester and become worse and then you're going to start resenting the person, okay? So just break up with them now. How can I be more confident in myself? Oh my god, so glad you asked. Funny thing is that last week we had an episode all about confidence confidence. Yes, because it is one of my favorite topics. I'm sure it's one of your favorite topics. It's something we all want to do. We all want to do better at um, or be better. Wow, I cannot speak today. Um, Here are some quick tips for how to be confident in yourself. Um, Quick tip one, check yourself on comparison, okay? Check yourself, first of all. Um, Because often a lot of people will compare themselves to others and let this fuel their insecurities, make their insecurities worse. Um, So work on positive comparison. And the next time you have like a negative thought of, let's say you and your friend are both in a class and you get the test, you get your test back. Say you got a B and your friend got an A. And your friend looks at you and says, oh, what did you get? I got an A. And you say, a B. And they're like, oh, that's not that bad. 
we've all had that conversation, right? Um, and then that's probably when you start to feel like, oh, I'm so dumb. They got an A and start like feeling all these negative thoughts about yourself, right? This is when you need to check yourself and say, okay, maybe I didn't do so great on that test, but my friend did really great and I'm proud for them and we should accomplish we should say, yay, good job. And I shouldn't be like, oh, that's so annoying that they got an A and that I didn't, I deserve an A, they don't, whatever, okay? I'd like to point out that someone else's accomplish accomplishments don't mean that your accomplishments are worse. If someone succeeds, it doesn't mean you're succeeding less, okay? Um, so this whole thing with comparison, I feel like that is the absolute main thing for confidence. But again, if you want more confidence tips, like an actual confidence tips in depth, as in 45 minutes in depth confidence tips, um, listen to last week's episode. I swear it'll help you so much. What are your favorite basics in your closet? Okay, I love talking about clothes. I feel like my style is so over the place. I was talking about this with my friend a few weeks ago. Um... And I was like, how would you define my style? And she was like, I genuinely have no idea. You just wear what you want. Which, yeah, because I feel like some people, their styles, it's like athleisure, preppy, boho, um, like classy business. Um, I don't know. Okay. But I just don't fit into any of those categories because all my clothes are just random. I wear what's comfy. Okay. My aesthetic is comfy aesthetic. Um, but some of my basics, I love the tank tops from Free People. They're called like Brahmies, like bra plus a cami. That's like the name of it. And it has like this razorback. I'm actually wearing one right now. Um, I got one of them in the store one day and then I liked it so much. I bought it in five different colors. Anyway, um, I also really like sweat shorts. I have a pair on from Aerie. Um, another clothing basic that I really like is just uh plain color sweatpants for me I have this uh tannish nude pair from H&M that's really good especially too if you wear you can make it kind of like a set by wearing a tan top and tan pants and that looks really nice and cohesive um some other basics that I like I have this oversized boyfriend sweatshirt that's gray from Brandy Melville that I got on like Depop or something that I really like just because it's easy to throw over um but my favorite stores I like free people I like anthropology I like urban um airy Abercrombie and Fitch I know um but yeah those are some of my faves and I know like fast fashion is bad guys but like clothes are so expensive like sustainable clothes are so expensive um so I just try my best not to buy a bunch I say this when I literally just bought like five tank tops anyway it's things I'm gonna wear okay so buy things you're actually gonna wear if you hear me say oh I wear this I love it and you're like I would never wear that don't buy it be just because I said it okay um only buy things that you're actually gonna wear because I've made the mistake too many times of buying something and then not really wearing it and then it's just a waste of money and it's like what's the point and you're just like getting easily influenced you know okay how can I double text a guy without seeming desperate or can I um I feel like it depends on your situation first of all assess does this guy like you back because first of all if the guy doesn't like you back and you don't know for sure that he likes you back that probably seems a bit annoying and you're like, mm, kind of strange. Um, but also if you know he likes you back or he's giving you the same energy, double text. I feel like people overthink this. Um, but then again, I haven't had like a boyfriend in years. So what do I know? Right. But I always double text like everybody, even my friends, and my family, like everybody if you, by double text you mean send my text in like multiple paragraphs or by double text um what i don't do is like if i send a message and they don't respond for a while i'm not gonna send one like 30 minutes later because i don't know i just never do that with anybody uh 
So maybe don't do that, but I feel like it's fine if you send multiple text messages and you're talking about the same thing. But I feel like following up on something when someone hasn't responded in like two hours is kind of weird. Uh, but then again, don't overthink your texting habits because I feel like people really do. And then again, I'm like, it's not a big deal. But some of the biggest icks, okay, is like some of people's emoji use. Like the crying laughing emoji. I hate that. And anyone who uses that immediately, I will stop talking to or I will vigorously bully. I'll be like, why? Why are you using this? And if you're like, Carmen, vigorously bully, that's mean, okay? This is like my close friends that I do. This is not some random person that I mutually know. No, that'd be mean. I'm like teasing my friends. Um, anyway, do you have any shaving tips? Uh, yes. First of all, I would like to point out, you don't have to shave if you don't want to. Um, totally optional. Uh, personally... I shave my legs like twice a month because I'm lazy, first of all. And second of all, I don't really care. Also, especially during fall, winter, spring, summer, literally <laughs> any time of the year. Um, I'm not playing a sport. I'm not really, you know, going out doing stuff where my legs are out all the time, especially in the colder months. So I just don't care. Also, in the summer, I don't really care. Um, so shaving tips um get a good razor it doesn't have to be an expensive one i use the one from billy and get sent the uh re not reusable but like the i don't know they send a bunch of razor heads and you can like pop them in and out um and i use that and i like it also the avino shave gel cream foam thing is good it says it helps you to shave less and I think it actually does because me using it compared to what my sister uses like she has to shave her legs all the time and I just don't um so I really like that also I feel like a lot of people say for shaving if you exfoliate first that helps I don't really use like a sugar scrub but I'll use a washcloth um on my legs and I think that helps and then always moisturize after because or else your legs are gonna be really dry um kind of crusty um but yeah how can i ask someone for their phone number or snap oh my god t i'm trying to think i have done this once in my entire life um and it was more as a meme so that someone is asking this is like bravo good job um first of all I don't know. I feel like just straight up ask them. If you're in the middle of having a conversation, say you're DMing on Instagram. I don't know. Just be like, hey, I don't really check my Instagram DMs enough. Can I add you on Snapchat? Or I don't check my Instagram DMs that much. What's your phone number? I'll respond faster on text. Like saying that you will respond faster on like Snapchat or text is a good way. Or like if you're in person and it's at school, um you could ask them for their phone number or snap for like a group project or you could get it from a friend if one of your friends has someone's snapchat just add them through that friend right and I feel like that's also not that weird especially if you're kind of nervous about asking um how can I fall asleep easier and faster and get a better night's sleep Y'all, as I've said, I've struggled with my sleep for like three weeks because of stress. And something that really helped me last night was I did a bedtime meditation, okay? And I haven't done one of those in like two years because I, I don't know, I used to not be able to fall asleep very easily and I would do like a bedtime meditation every night. But just searching bedtime meditation on YouTube, okay? Do it. I promise it's so good. And I felt so refreshed and so relaxed and it was just so nice. Um, so do that. Another thing that helps, don't go on your phone directly before bed. I like putting my phone on the other side of the room, having it on do not disturb, sleep mode, whatever. Um, I also like to read before bed. That helps. Doing things that can calm your mind, whether it's a long nighttime routine or if it's reading. Um, I think both those things can be good. Um, make sure your bed is comfy, that it's not too hot or not too cold in your room. 
feel like temperature has a big thing with sleep because if my room is too hot, I will not be able to fall asleep. Like literally ever. It'll take me hours. Um, so make sure the temperature is good before you actually try to fall asleep. How can I deal with the mean girls? Hmm. Okay, first of all, gotta point out that if someone is like trying to make your life so miserable and is actively being hurtful and saying nasty things, just think about one, the kind of person they are, and two, how bored they must be to be messing with you. Okay? Um, because that's what I always think. I'm like, how bored are people that they have to focus on my life? Because I know for a fact, my life is not that interesting. So I don't know why y'all would have to focus on it, you know? Um, next thing to realize is that if you're letting the opinions or things that these mean girls say get to you, think about this. Um, if you don't like these girls, why would you care what their opinion is of you? Because you should only care about the opinions of people that you like, like your family, your close friends, your own opinion of yourself, right? So don't let these mean girls get to you. Also, something you can do, either ignore them, because a lot of times people are just being mean to get a reaction, and they'll keep going, keep going. And every time you react, they're going to keep going. But if you just stop, stop reacting, don't say anything, like, what are they going to do? Also, a lot of times you can turn it back around them. Like, if they say something mean or, like, I'm trying to think of a way to explain this. It's, like, turning people's, like, backhanded compliments back around them. I'm trying to think of an example of a compliment. Oh, like, if you know someone's giving you a backhanded compliment, they're like, I guess we'll use the example from Mean Girls, where Regina is like, oh my god, where'd you get that skirt? I love it. And she's like, oh, I got it from my mom. And she's like, mm, cute, vintage. And she goes, that's the ugliest effing skirt I've ever seen. You know that scene? Okay, it's like that. So we have a backhanded compliment. And if someone's like, oh my god, that skirt is so cute. Where did you get it? And you can tell that they're being mean. Okay. Just go with it. Have a happy, good answer and be like, I love this skirt. This is my favorite. Where'd you get yours? And just be nice to them back. Because first of all, if you're trying to be mean to someone and they're like not being affected by what you say and they're just being nice back, that just like ruins the fun out of everything. So they're just going to stop. Also, straight up to another method for dealing with mean people. Just tell them being like, you're being mean. You're being rude. No one's going to like you if you keep saying that, right? So you can call them out on it as well. So thanks for sending in your off questions. I hope this answered a few things that you might have had or wondered about. Um, but yeah, I hope you all have the most amazing week. Make sure you leave a rating and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And make sure you're following me on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at the Girly Girl Podcast. Love ya. Bye.